Okay, y'all, let me see. Well, this is the picture I'm about to be using. Let me throw it in Procreate. Mm -mm, I always use the eight and a half by 11 letter shy sheet of paper. And for those that don't know, when inserting a photo, if you don't want nobody to see that you're tracing or whatever, for whatever reason for your time lapse, just insert private photo. Yep, that's the image we're going to be using. I may have to think about another setup for this one, huh? I'm going to make it look like it's upside down on y'all end. Get my setup right. Yeah, I'm about to reset this up. I can't even really get to the iPad how I got this set up. Let me see how I'm gonna do this, y'all. Oh, damn, I took away one of them, and that more. Completely fair. What it say? Device locked. How did the device lock? I don't know, y'all. I'm gonna say device lock. Now I'm trying to see how to get this thing from my lock. Y'all excuse me, but I'm trying to see how. Damn, bro, how the device lock? I'm gonna say device initiation locked. I don't understand that. What's going on? Anybody know how to unlock this thing off alive? Cause I'm trying to. Pull it. I'm just, I'm just on. Um, keep it like this. And I'll show y'all how I always start with the green color in Procreate. Pen is always my technical pen. What is that right there? Technical pen. And I have a little streamline. This right now, this is a whole lot. So I'm going to take it down a little bit so you have a little more wiggle room. And one thing also I do before just stenciling it, I go over and duplicate the layer. I always make additional layers. So I got that. Take it down, desaturate it. That's not desaturate. That's desaturating it. And for like small parts, like when it get dark under the chin, just in case I can't really see something that's super dark, I'll just duplicate that one. Go back over to adjustments. Click on curves. Now I'll bring the highlights up a little bit. See how it lightens up some of the dark things? So I keep a bright one. Just in case I need to go switch back and forth. Spots I don't, you know, can't see too well. Well, yep, this is the portrait I'm going to use. Make sure you always create the additional layer to draw. And like I said, I use green because I made a video and I can see. I know now how I could just, you know, convert everything over to its own layer without having to start over. And see, that's a good spot right there. See, it brighten the teeth up a little bit. Let's see if it's going to help any better if we brighten it up more, but the teeth. We're going to just make an extra layer on top of that, just in case we need it, just so we ain't got to make it later on down the road. And I definitely normally have a couple of layers. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stencil. And I'm going to tattoo from here all the way across the jersey. I don't know if I should really capture all the Lakers. Because the main thing is the focus is the portrait. So let's start on the top of the jersey. By the mouth. 
See what size brush we got? Well, that's the size set right there. You can easily set it just by holding down. You can always better lock in place. Let's see, I would think how the opacity got low. I don't know. I never use a low opacity unless I'm using an airbrush too. Let me go to the dark one just to capture the shadow. Go back to green. Oh, I don't want that there. I don't know what changed this now. I feel like. Hold up, man. Let me see if I got my own gesture controls right. Because no way my hand should be affecting this screen. It seems like once my hand touch it. Yeah, no touches on. So I don't know why my hand. Let me see. Finger touch will invoke quick menu. Tap. Quick shade. That's quick menu. Mm -mm. Erase. Nope. None of that. None of that. Clear layer. Yeah, touch is off. Four finger touch will toggle the string. Yeah. But I don't see why my hand doing anything. So let's get started on this. Go a little bit darker green than that. I don't know how this thing wind up getting locked, but I'll figure it out. I'm a YouTuber after this. I might go with a little more streamlined. Let's see. A little bit more. No, stabilization. Dark part of them out to make sure we're hitting everything right. Just lighten it up a little bit just to make sure nothing else ain't there. I make little lines to the part that's a little shaded, just to make sure. And if I see on the stencil, of course, I'm going to see that it's a little line through it, so I know it's a shaded area. Let's go light, just for the teeth. And I'll never make a line all the way down through the teeth. I'll just make a line on the top of it, come around, curve it, make another line on the other side. Because there's really not lines in the middle of the teeth. So you don't want to end up tattooing lines there. Get a lip. I'm gonna capture that shape. And that's one thing you gotta do is be patient because think about it, this stencil is your portrait. And tattooing, you definitely gonna wanna spend some time tattooing the portrait so you don't wanna mess up your stencil. If you do, just click back, you know, double tap. And see how I make those little dashes, just so I know, okay, I'm gonna stop my shades by right there. Okay, it's more light in this corner. So I'll keep that there. And this part of the nose, damn, I don't know how to unlock it, just bothering me, y'all. They say rotate device back. Orientation is locked. Okay, rotate device back. Oh, okay, there you go. I just had to rotate it back, gotcha. Let's capture this side of the face. And that's where hair is, so when I normally get to hair, I go to my light, just so I can make sure, see spaces in between the hairs. But that's mostly black. It's a little hair right there, a little bit. I make these little textures, just so I know once I tattoo it, I actually use them out of three rounds, sometimes even a one for the finer hairs. Normally my stencils for portraits take a feel like a good 30 minutes. Like I said, you don't want to rush it at all. Make sure you capture details. And once you do portraits like enough, you'll get the understanding of like what you're going for. Cause everybody do a stencil pretty much different. Or I do tattooing in general pretty different. 
So it's all about what worked for you. Um, boom. Capture these little hairs. So you get light as it come down. Definitely get light in that area. But go back to the regular one, because this is more of a darker right in the bottom of the jersey. Let's come across. And now not all the way on now. There we go. And one thing I used to catch myself with, try not to be zooming in too much. Like for example, like you don't want to get every little pimple in the face this close. You want to stand back a little bit to catch some small details. Like the jersey, I'm not going to try to get every little hole perfect. I'm basically going to make a dot there. Almost like a dot. At least I know that's where holes at in the jersey. And then with my mind, like the common sense would tell me, okay, of course a hole is not just black. You're going to want to make a shadow, how you have it, and then you're going to fade it out because it's a jersey. And this is, you know, you can see through. It's a see through hole. It's not just a flat, solid shape. Once you understand lighting, you'll understand these small things that I'm talking about. If y'all have another way that y'all may do it, definitely let me know. Always well, down to spread the knowledge, receive knowledge. Whatever going to help all of us become better. Ooh. And these holes you see ain't that dark. I don't see those. Another thing, yep. That's the original layer. See little small holes. Maybe I need to give me one of those gloves that, you know, when you touch the string, it's not gonna affect it. Cause Lord, the string be jumping sometimes. I don't know why, like. It don't move when touching it, like, but it just sit my hand down. Plant my hand on the screen. It makes it move sometimes. On top of the jersey, take it smooth. Nice and slow, take your time. Go back, I had actually went over that line. And it don't matter how many times you gotta go back. Whatever gotta be done, and I know when I do this on fake skin, it's definitely gonna be some time. My normal time portraits, it take about, in between the earliest was three hours up to about five and a half hours. So this portrait, I'm gonna challenge myself most definitely. Push the envelope to see how many hours can I really invest into this and see if I see the progress or the difference in the images. Most likely I will, because I always was a believer of more time you put into something, the better it comes out. Well, ever since my drawings, my paintings, you know, stuff like that. More time was put in, definitely the more detail the drawing was. More vibrant any paint color was, detail in that. So, yep, it's all about time. And that's why they say if you're going to be a tattoo artist, you got to be patient. Well, definitely got to be patient. Being an artist in general, like, you know, but unless you do abstract art, a lot of people that do abstract art and things like that, I don't think it's really required too much patience. You know, maybe maybe it do, I never tried abstract. Mm, painting with my little own nephew and nieces, you know, that was kind of an abstract painting. It's an old painting, but you know, abstract painting. Got some little shades. And you see this little shade underneath the collar? I'll just make a few lines just to know, okay, that's a solid shadow underneath there. See how that shadow roll over from the jersey? I'll make that crease come down and I'll kind of add lines to know that shadow rolling up over. That's just how you understand your own stencil a little better. Like I said, these dots, we already know. These for holes in the jersey, but they're not going to be solid black holes, of course. They're going to do it like any other um, object. Dark at the bottom where the shadow at and come up and fade it out. But, like I said, I'll be able to go. I'm going to see. I should be able to go live doing the actual portrait, too. And that way, if y'all have questions or anything, 
we both will be working together, you know? Y'all see me making mistakes? Let me know why you're doing that, you know? And maybe I'll find another approach if I do, or I'll let you know why I do it. But if I don't have an answer on why I do it, then maybe I need to rethink why I'm doing it myself, right? I try to keep the mindset as, you know, always a student and continue to learn because the minute you get too big-headed, think you know it all, that's the minute you stop growing and you don't want to plateau as an artist. I know a lot of artists that have plateaued because, you know, you can't tell them nothing. And you don't want to be that artist. Because the minute you think you is big and bad and you the best, you, know, you really ain't nowhere because you stop growing. Right there. All right, I know that's going to be a little challenging itself, all the dots in the jersey. Like I said, I might not even go. I ain't gonna, might not even touch the Laker symbol. And you see how this shadow, I'm going to bring it to the original layer. We've seen that shadow curve up, right? But see how this shadow now, it kind of kind of flows up that way. I'm going to add a few dots. And I'm also going to add this line here and put lines in between the dots to know, okay, that's a shadow there. We're still going to have our dots, though. You don't understand, so I know all the dots don't print out exactly perfect. They be light sometimes, but it's just a, a guide, you know, just a guide. You see those dots coming out where you know, okay, it, it's going to curve a little bit. That's why drawing skills, I always recommend. Yes, it's needed. But if you're not doing, not doing realistic, I would say drawing skills is definitely not needed when you could just print out anything and copy it like that. But if you're doing a portrait, you can't just print out and copy it like that. You got to know what to shade and all that. That's why I need to do another video on the lighting. You see, just looking at this picture, the lights, how it's coming down and hitting. Obviously, he got a light right above his head, like up in this area. Coming down, hitting over there, hitting the front of the nose, hitting right here. And look like maybe a light coming from this way to tap the back of his neck like that. Because it can't just be behind him. It got to be like actually on top coming down. Yep, it got to be like above him. But understanding lighting is a big part. And portraits, I know, realistic as well. Get the rest of that jersey, boop. And it's good to go to the stabilization so you ain't really got to worry about getting messed up lines too much. Helps out. But if you're beginning out, I would say definitely practice the lines. Practice the lines as much as possible. Like, I don't really trip on getting too much clean lines. Cause I know once tattooing, you're gonna you know sharpen things up naturally on its own. Oh. Only between layers, you gotta watch that. Uh oh, look at my almost drew on the wrong layer right there. Let me lock that. So in case y'all don't know, you can easily just lock your layers so you don't draw on them. Cause I know it happens, but I got a video on my page to show how to save you from that. You know, save some time if you do draw on your layer. If y'all have any other questions, let me know, and I'll definitely make some more videos regarding those things. And the reason now I'm doing this because I got some extra time on my hands. Like I said, I thought I booked somebody for it this morning, but nope, turned out it's for next week, the Monday of next week. So I got some free time, and I'm going to stencil this portrait. Like I said, I'm going to put it on the fake skin, and yep. I'm gonna get it started. That's an undershirt. I need to come way down there, huh? Another shoulder, the rotation, shoulder cuff. And like a little bruise there, a little bruise there. But it's not, you know, it's round and it's not that dark. <laughs> And on the back of this neck, follow these details, that line. Oh. 
for some more lines. And you know, that's, I'm gonna add these thin lines just for shading. But these straight lines all together, they're gonna be for the creases in the neck. Crease in the neck. Crease in the neck. The real thin lines just you no know, guide direction I'm shading. Like for example, right here, I can go back, erase that. Yeah, no quick line right there, boom, boom. Just in that area. Boom, 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 boom. And this kind of gets you prepared for when you tattoo on the real portrait. Like the shadow on the back of the neck. Okay, I know it gets cut that shadow off here and all that back there. It'll be pretty much dark. But it's gonna lighten up as it roll over. See that light rolls over. And that right there, that shadows. Take that crease, give it a nice little bold line so you know it's a crease. And don't mis misjudge it as a shadow. So the straight lines, you know it's for sure it's a crease. And for the shadow behind the ear, I'm going to mark off the whole shadow. That's going to be all connected. But you see what a light spot in that shadow? They got a dark part, a lighter part of the shadow. Sometimes I put like an L, but you know, it's not needed. Walk off that triangle as a light spot. Then I'll add that as the dark part of the shade. Back of the head, you know that's shadow, shadow, shadow. And you want to keep it simple because think about it, we just printing this out of stencil machine. So you don't want it to be all muddy. That's why you try to keep things as lines and no shade in the stencil. That's why I never, I don't think I tried it yet, but I don't think I'll be able to go with the, the inkjet stencil. It just be too much going on. I'd rather my own guide that I can understand versus printing that picture out and just trying to copy that picture as is. That's just not my way of doing things. That's a little shadow in there. Nah. That's just the side of the face right there. But you notice that's not the headline either. That's probably just a shadow. That's why I keep different layers. You see, that's just a little shadow, a shade that's gonna come around the ear. Look like the hairline starts about right there though. You see, Kobe had hair, but you see it wasn't that much. We barely could see the lining. So judging this, uh, see the hair, we're gonna get a hairline right there. Cause it definitely get lost within the sweat. And if you can't even see that, bam, we go to our original. Original with color, but yeah, it look like that would be the hairline. And right up here. That color definitely help, you know. But you keep all those options open. That way you know you ever get stuck. You always go to those options. You see like the back of the ear? With the color, you could kind of lose it. So if I was to put that black back on, I know for sure where that ear stops at. No, boom. There's a method to it all. Mm. The back of the head. go back because I've seen that came off track a little bit. So just be careful, especially on Procreate. Don't drag a super long line. So if you have to go back, it just take away where you came off the line at. And it don't take away that whole line that you done drew. I still end up doing it sometimes, but you know, when you get in the flow of things, just let it flow, you know.
See how it came out right there? Well, nope. I'm going to curve that right into that. Ooh, ooh, my back. Mm. I noticed when stenciling the portrait, I'm going to say I'm um, putting it on fake skin. It tend to be a lot easier once you let it sit, let it dry up on the fake skin versus trying to just start on it on the fake skin. It definitely will wipe off pretty easy. So with the portrait, I'm going to let that sit on the skin for a little minute, make sure it dry up. And that stencil is definitely going to last a long time. It ain't going nowhere. But this will be the toughest part of actually tattooing it. These small little sweat glands, things like that. That'll be the toughest part, we know for sure. The light is hitting the top of the head in that area. We still gonna have to add little pieces of hair. You kind of start to feel like you're doing the own. Y'all have heard the SMP? People get hair tattooed on their head, basically, yeah. Hair like this, feel like that's what you're doing. Just dotting it up, dotting it up. Add texture. So far, what we got? And see, so we basically just dotting it up. And you gotta, when tattooing it, once you dot it up, you gotta make sure you leave space. Leave space for those white areas, like, which is sweat, or just, you know, the light hitting those light spots. Because you gotta remember, light is what make the object. If it wasn't for the light, it'll be a flat image. He wouldn't have this shadow on his cheekbone, none of that. With light, everything is possible. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Caps that cheekbone, come down. Just capture that line on the face right there, see, boom. Not bad. Gonna capture the side of the face. See where that shadow end that under the neck? That's where that chin bone starts. See we get lost in that shadow right there, so I'm gonna bring up the lighter one. See, that's the chin as well. Now we can see in that spot, boom. Make sure we add that line down, no, okay. The chin bone look like it stops here, but most of the shadow fall off right there. And that looks like hair on the chin, let's see. We go to our dark, or we go to the color, let's see. That's hair, but most of that is shaved hair. And you see how light that is? So you can add a little couple of strings of hair. Not even strings, that's really shaved, like. So there'll be a couple of little pores, your skin pores, like. What is it, hair, hair, what is it, hair pute follicles? <laughs> What's the word for it? It's basically what hair was, but it basically was shaved off. Same thing in the face. You see this look like some hair texture in there. You can add that. But most of all, we're going for smoothness. See, it's light over here. So I can make this whole spot. We know this is the lightest light that in that circle. You see that? I surrounded that highlight. The whitest, the lightest part of the face right there. With that. And 
That's going to be a light spot. That's a light spot. A light spot. So you can just kind of separate them on their own. You know the face going to continue coming down. I see in the sweat glands. That's, that'll be the tough part. I think I'll hit the sweat glands like that. Let's sweat there. Give it its own little shape. Get a sweat there on the shape. And you will basically follow that. But as you're looking at the image while tattooing it, you're going to be adding the skin right on side of it, but also making sure you got those sweat glands how you want them. Oh, that went back. Yep, so this will be a challenge for me myself. Definitely with the sweat glands, I see how I capture that sweat coming on his face. Even like in the middle of the face, <laughs> showing that sweat. Basically like drawing water beads on petals on the flower, which is a lot more easier than all of this sweat. So I'll add a couple of little details, knowing that, okay, that's the sweat part, even though I'm going to be looking at the reference while tattooing it. But at least some of those sweat beads is directly on the face where it stints with that. Is that how the picture was? Because you don't want to put too much detail into your stencil. Like I said, just like an Epson printer or something. Too much detail doesn't look too muddy for me and I get lost easy. I prefer to make my own stencil so I can... You already get memorized with the image while stenciling it by hand. Also, when you're tattooing it, now you're even more prepared. You know, feel like you done tattooed it once, now you're going over it for a second time. You got little beads up in there. I know for sure I'm probably not going to get all the sweat. No lie. I'm going to really push the envelope. And I say I get this a five-day project just to see how much of this I could really pull off. You'll never know until you push the envelope to see what you're capable of. So I'm going to give that a try. This definitely will be one of the longest portraits I've ever done. Besides drawing, because I done spent some hours and days and weeks on portraits that I done drew. And make sure that's where his head's stopping at. Yep. That's why it's always good to have the separate layers. I can see exactly where in that. It look like he has some shade kind of coming across the front of his head. Now that's mostly shade right there. A little light spot okay now eyebrows let me show y'all how i do my eyebrows we're gonna do that on this own thing separately i normally go to my lightest light to see my eyebrows you see this is the hair right here is just some shadow if i go back to the image go back you see that most likely that's not hair it's a little shadow, so it'll be like a dark part of the skin. I don't normally give that hair. Go to that light one again. I'm gonna turn on the layer, my bad. So we're gonna make that just some shade. But we're gonna start the hair actually in this area. You see, you got some thicker eyebrows, so you're just gonna give it a couple of hairs to make it thick. If it was thin, I would just be hitting them like that to make them thin back here, but we know they are thick. So I'm going to go over that. You can always check back in. So that's hair up there as well, but that's going to be a little more thinner hairs. But most likely the eyebrows going to always be more thicker in the middle. And you can kind of fade out with some slight shade. Cause that's just little thin hairs on the outside of the eyebrow. Same thing on the right side. That one is a lot thicker. Probably due to the fact of where the light was at, because there's not a lot of light hitting that eyebrow. So most of that whole side of the face was a shadow. So of course that shade right here, and the hair starts about right there. I ain't drawing on my layer. 
You know it's gonna be pretty thick. Curve it around with that. You just gotta trust the process. Trust your stencil. And follow your reference when tattooing. So if you go back and look at that. This eyebrow is not too thick, but you can understand it. And let's go into the eyelid. My family go my regular image so I can catch some shadows. So you know that's a shadow there. You follow the eyelid. Curves around, but all this is definitely shadow. Don't make it too muddy. Actually, I might get rid of this line, make it a little thinner one. And all that, you know that's shadow in there. But you ain't really gotta mark it. Some spots I mark it off, some spots I just don't. But this is basically an extension of this shadow. It's gonna be lighter, dark in here, and light as it come out there. Also on the nose, you see, you can mark off our highlights. That's the lightest part on the nose in that area. That's the light, lightest part on the nose as well. And as we trinkle down in between here, it's gonna be light, but it's also gonna have some shades in there. So all in that area, which means, of course, mostly in between this area shade, the bead of sweat. So that that shade and the head curved this way, the forehead will curve down. So you make sure you don't make that flat. Just like above this eyelid, you see that? Trust that shadow, because really it's based off of shapes. So if you shade that in, that's based off of shapes. And make those dots. You ain't gotta make no full shadow coming up, because you notice the, the bridge of the nose, and that's where it's gonna curve in that. Now let's go to our lights. You see how we can see it a lot better? Versus, I feel like it's all black up in there. I can see some of the eyelashes. So now I'm just gonna follow those eyelashes. You see some lights on it. Boom. Make sure you don't overdo it though, but that's definitely an eyelash right there. If you're unsure, just tap on it. Hold up, go to our color one. See, that's eyelashes up in there. You can extend it down a little bit. We see it's more down there, boom. That's where the eyelashes stop at. And we know this is basically just the pupil on the inside of the eye. We're gonna keep that separation. So that pupil black, and we're gonna keep that probably the lightest we can. Just like that. I go back to our light doing this eye. Boom, see that? And the pupil, of course, is the darkest thing inside the eye. So I make sure I leave that dot for the lightest part on the pupil. Make that second circle for the iris. No, not the iris, but the pupil itself. That's the darkest part in the eye. Oh, man, no. I'm gonna make this curve for the actual iris itself. Separate that, and you're gonna get cut off by the other part of the eye. And just trust your reference. And you go from shades from there because we ain't too detailed as you see. I'm gonna take away that, but you see, all that is pretty much the top, the pink in the eye, but it's gonna be real light gray. I'm not gonna make that real black. Like I said, the iris, always dark on the outside. Pupil, the blackest part. Yep. Now let's follow the rest of that eye. Come from back here, boom. And then rest right up on that iris.
See how the light hitting above on top of the eyelid? Because it's rolled up, it curves up like that. Like eyeball curves. Let me go back to a regular layer. Let me go to that one. You got shadow here. Let's be curved. Add a little bit of shadow. Now we still got some highlights there. Yeah, all this kind of rolls over into a shadow. It'll be a hard. It'll be a hard line for the actual crease of the eyelid, but then it fades out with shade. Like right here, that's a more of a crease. And but this one definitely ain't gonna be a hard crease because it's just the eyeball. Yep, boom, a couple of dots for that. Make sure y'all stick into y'all comfortable area so y'all get used to, you know, expanding, trying different things with your portraits. Let me go to the lights, catch the inside of his nose. Mm. You don't want to make all the black, but you know. That's the inside the nose. That's all that matter. The hair. Go to our original image. Now we see where the light is, right? You come down, block that part of the face out. Where our light is light at. That's how our light is light which means the edge of this nose is gonna be shaded. And if you don't shade the edge of the nose, either you will put shadows surrounding the nose to have it a little light on the end. But look like in this case, it will just be shaded on the edge of that nose. Yep, make sure you get that right. And we know, of course, it comes up Shade, shade on the edge. Real soft. <laughs> All right, chill. And never look, use lines if you're doing a realistic portrait. Like on here, I'm making lines, but when I shade it, it's gonna be real soft. Like right there, we see it's light on this side of the face, cause we got this part of the cheek that's coming down, which means we're gonna roll over our shade on top of the nose like that. But I ain't gonna make all those lines. I'm just gonna add, add one little shape. Just like that. Cause less is more when it comes to a stencil. You don't wanna confuse yourself. You know this eye bridge right there on top. Down. We pretty much got our stencil now. The only other thing I would do is, I wouldn't just leave that just blank like that. So I add a few lines there to know, okay, yeah, that's shaded in there. Right here, that's, that's shaded in there. What y'all thinking, what y'all think? Let's see how we looking. We missing this part of his eye, so you always go back and check, double check. Which is right there. There we got everything. But you still want to take time and look over it. Toggle your screen on and off. See if anything missing. So far, I don't think I see nothing. I think I'm gonna make a harder line for that though. Make like how his hairline. 
make a harder line just for the stencil to know. Oh, that's where his hairline starts at. Even though it's not like that on the thing, but that's why I'm putting it at. Cause we know his line and definitely come down right there. Let's see, probably erase this. Cause it come down right there, but then it look like it fades out and just to his skin sweating. So I'm gonna make it start right there. Really, that's gonna have to just be left alone, no lie. That's something you just gotta figure out while you're tattooing and looking at your reference to see, oh, it's really nothing there. No, you just gotta trust your stencil. Put that line in front of the head. We know that shadow. So when tattooing right here, you see this is gonna be the light part of the neck, especially right there. But on the side, the light, of course, it's gotta be dark. So that part of the chin is gonna stand out way more while the neck tend to sit back. And that's just like tattooing anything though. If you got a dark, you're gonna shade the side of the nose, so we mean we're gonna have light on this side of the nose. It's basically, it's a, it's, you know, it's a game about putting lights on side of darks, lights on side of darks. That's what's going to help it stand out. The neck from the jersey. It's yellow, but of course, black and gray. This jersey is way lighter than the skin tone, you know, just by understanding those shades. Like I said, the neck is going to be light. Right in that area, but it's going to be dark as it rolls up upon the chin. Like I said, by the light coming from the top. That's why it rolls down the side of the face and it gets darker because the light cannot reach on the side of the face because his cheekbone is there. So it's hitting that cheekbone and when it roll off, the light not touching it. It's touching it, but not as much. You see those are definitely direct hits. But yep, y'all, I think that's going to be the stencil. Let's on. But some telling me I need the logo. I think I should just add the logo. And I got to add that part of the jersey right there as well. I may just add the logo, because of course, you know, come on, it's Kobe, bro. You got to know. Everybody knows the Lakers, but let me just go ahead and add that at the back of the jersey right there. I'm going to start on the logo. And try to keep it clean as possible. Actual, like an actual jersey. I ain't gonna halfway it. Get those stitches on the outside. Got the shadows coming down. Add those dots, dots, dots. And of course, we gotta add those dots right there as well. We we'll go back to black and gray. Little shadow, shadows. I'm add those dots. The thing you can do, they got different brushes that you can make, and I could just go. Matter of fact, I could do it with this brush. Watch. Let me just show y'all. For example, if I go over here and go to space, for the shape at scatter. Uh oh, what I did count jitter. So it's not that. Which one is it? Taper. Is it scale? It's not scale. Which one is stroke pad? I think it's got to be that stroke pad. So if y'all click on that, you see over here how it become dots. The more you slide up the spacing, lines all the way into dots, right? So if I was to take that and just go over here to try to make these dots, let's see what it do. I'm going to make this own line. Let's see how far the dots spread apart. Okay, that's on now. That's way far apart than we needed, but that's just showing you all there's another way to do it. Let me go back and fix my brush. I just feel it's easier to just, you know, do it by hand. But, you know, just in case, you know, you feel yourself lazy and just want to do that, it's always an option, but... 
Things got to be done, got to be done, you know? No matter if you're feeling lazy or not, some things just ain't always a shortcut to. Or I shouldn't be taking a shortcut on. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Add a couple of dots, hit the rest of the logo. Lakers. Mm. Oop. I guess because that shadow right there, that bad looked like the threads there, but you know, most definitely we know that is the threads. Mm. And for those that don't know, you can always hold your pencil down and get straight lines if you want to. But I just catch myself not using it as much. You just drag straight across and get you a straight line now. Straight line. Just hold it down. Depends on how you got it set up though. Bring it back into the L and you can just bring a line down. See that's not, see how that's off? I think you can also go back edit shape. You click on arch, dang. This should let me undo it. But yeah, if you go back, I'm gonna show y'all. Make a straight line, go up top, edit shape. Why I put quadrilateral? Oh, I ain't know I was gonna do that. But see how I let you edit that line. And now you can customize it directly. How it was meant to go. Let's see if they're gonna let me do quadrilateral on this shape here. It'll look like I don't really need to do it though. Just use that line, create that arch. Let's create a line on the bottom. Of course, it's not a straight line, so we're gonna. Do Edit that shape. Oh, they only give us a line this time. You can't edit quadrilateral or nothing. So I guess it depends on the stroke of that line that they picked on what options they're gonna give you to edit that shape. I wish they would have had the options to choose. Like I want this to be quadrilateral, I want this to be an arch. That would have made it more probably like Procreate, huh? Not Procreate, but Photoshop. But it definitely gives you, you know, a lot more opportunities to do different things, especially shortcuts, you know. Can't forget about them threads inside there. Let's go to the color just in case we, you know, can't see it, but we definitely see the white is the threads around the actual logo. Pull that down, we're gonna edit that shape. See that in the middle while the black showing, just lift it up. And now the black no longer showing. Are you all with me? And we've been on here for a couple of minutes now. Look like it's soon gonna be going on an hour, but I not started in the stream lock. But right after I'm done this, yep, I'm going to print it out the stencil machine. Start getting on the fake skin. So we get started on this, you know, no sense to postpone it and make it longer than it have to be. That way you can get to sitting on the fake skin, start drying up, and get ready to be tattooed. I had made a post, so if y'all seen it, let me know the next person I should 
be tattooing on my side of Kobe portrait. So my hand jumped. That's why I went tattooing as well. You don't want a stretch a line in case your hand was to jump like that or get out of hand. Stay in your control space. You make lines, which we could just add dots along those lines. That's what I could have did for this. Just added dots along those lines. Mm. We even come all the way down here though. Let's see we have it. I think we good now. Let's check it out, y'all. How we looking? How we looking? Let's see. That E good, huh? No, we got we missing the inside the E. The threads. Yep, about to start stenciling this out. And for those that don't know, I'm gonna show it to y'all. Probably just leave it on live until I print it out the stencil machine. Yep, we print this through a pocket jet stencil printer. Notice anything missing? I don't think I see nothing. I think I wanna put something right there on the face. Just an indicator to know. Okay, we not shading close to the nose. I'm gonna keep that as a light space. Keep all that kind of light. You know, we shading up in there. Mm. Add that a little bit darker so that definitely print out the stencil machine. You definitely don't want it too light. Let's see if we're missing anything from this eye because it looked like a lot of space is missing there. Which, of course, look at that. The nose bridge come straight down. And just probably the shadow. So that's the eyelid. Okay, my bad, y'all. Think we got everything. You got that shadow. Make sure we create that shadow right underneath the teeth. Because I noticed we didn't add that. Yep, and we got the hairline just dark just so we know exactly where it's at. You don't want to lose the hairline. And we don't need to have it that dark, but we know where it's at though. Hold on. There we go. Let me know how we came out. This is going to be the stencil I think I'm going to go with. We can add little slight shadows. Like that light. We can mark that off, let that know it's going to be light. A shadow, another crease right there. We know this all light, so we ain't got to do nothing. Separate that. And basically, all that's just shade in there. Yep. So I'm about to get it. The stencil prepared. Once I do it in the green, of course, all I do is go over here to the tools adjustment and go down to brightness. Bring it all the way to black. And you see, boom, we got it black. And if I feel it's too light to catch the sensor machine, I'll just duplicate it. Now I'll take the duplicate, go over to adjustments, and Gaussian blur. You see how you can add one or even two, however many you want to add. I say one is better, and just, just duplicate the Gaussian blur. And you see how it tends to darken up the more you hit duplicate on that one. So say now I got that and I feel it's still not dark enough. Add another Gaussian blur, 1%. And that's gonna make it even darker. I don't think we definitely don't need to be that dark. So I'm gonna take away, go back to our first one, you see. 
that's our first one. Delete that. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker than our first one. Not that dark how we had it though. Gaussian blur. Oh no, that's the original layer. I don't want Gaussian blur, the original layer. Let me add a little. And I think I'm gonna keep it this big, no lie. I think I'm gonna do the piece about this size. What y'all think? So I got the fake skin, it's a nice size fake skin. So it's definitely gonna take us some time. So I'm considering if I really should do it that big. But we're gonna get it ready for the stencil printer. I'm gonna lock all this in one group. That's how I do. Lock all of it in one group. Just in case I don't need it that dark, I can always go back and take some of them off. All right, y'all. Let me um get it prepared for the stencil printer. I'm about to take you all over with me to the stencil printer. Ooh, how y'all dig on the day? How y'all dig on the day? Take y'all over to the stencil printer and show y'all the stencil paper I've been using lately. Let's see. This has been a pack, tack it on. And normally when I'm on Amazon, I just reorder the same stencil paper. It's been working pretty good. It's not messy because one on my hand, my hands was purple every time I use it. I don't know why every time you touch it, that purple is just getting all over the place. You make sure once you rip that yellow off the back of your own stencil paper, the next thing, so I know I forgot it a lot of times, probably just be moving too fast, but don't forget your tracing paper. That go in the trash as well. I'm going to show y'all how I put it in the stencil machine. Oh, my bad. So this is how it goes in the stencil machine. Just like that. Put the front down in. And you see the paper automatically kind of sucks in. And if it don't look right, I just lift this up and slide the paper to the side. Just like that. And I'm about to take the iPad I got to put it on the printer Wi-Fi. The printer has its own Wi-Fi, which is what? That's on, um, let me see what it said, DJ Pocket Jet, I believe. Show it to you all. This is the Wi-Fi the printer be on. Direct Pocket Jet, so you're going to switch Wi-Fi's to print directly through your stencil printer. All right, now since it's connected, Let's go back. I'm gonna size it down a little cause that's a whole sheet of paper. Huh? I ain't trying to do it like that big. We're gonna use size that down till. I ain't notice I left out one layer, but I think that's big enough right there. And that's a nice size, All right? All right there. Before you do anything, before you print it, you're going to make sure you hit flip. Because your thing going to print it out on the mirror side. So if I want it facing right, I'm going to print it out like that. And it's going to print out the other way. You know, so make sure you flip your images when you're using a direct through stencil printer. So next, go up there. Tools, share, you see that? JPEG and print and make sure it's printing out through your stencil printer printing on the bottom of the sheet of paper you don't want to take up the top but even though we ain't probably got no more room on the paper anyway or uh, should i print out two since i got papers yeah let me do that instead of wasting the whole stencil sheet i'm gonna turn him sideways i can take up that side 
All right. Now, if I duplicate that, I'm going to take that top layer. Oh, no. I just need one. Top layer and merge that. I can make that flat because I already got that down there. Now I'm going to slide it over, make it a little bit more smaller to fit it on the paper. Now I can duplicate it some more to see in case the first one print out too light. We definitely know that we're going to print out darker. So JPEG print. Make sure it's on the, you see it's on the right Wi-Fi. The settings, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it as it is. That don't make a difference. Paper size, we got that. Media type, auto select, but plain paper, I don't know, I'm gonna have to touch that. So just click on print, it's exporting. And soon before you know it, it's about to be coming out the stencil printer. Let's see which one. We should go with you see when that light start blinking that let you know the printer have received the image and soon within 10 seconds it normally start printing out give it this time mm. feel like it's taking longer than 10 seconds huh well yep there we go so that's the first one and that's the bigger one we're gonna see how dark they are let's see Okay, let's. Uh oh. Take that off. Look like we might have to go a little bit darker, huh? Let's see. Yeah, actually, this is pretty good. What size? I think I'm gonna just go with the the big one. Yep, the stencil, nice size. The only thing, see how like the paper get crinkled up? The only thing I do from that is take my regular stencil paper, my regular spirit stencil paper, sit it on top, sit it on top of there and just trace over it. You see, this is actually how the stencil gonna go on. So I just go back, whatever would look missing, I just trace over. Appreciate y'all for watching. Definitely I'm about to be out with y'all, get this thing printed on the, well it's already printed, but I'm about to put it on the own fake skin. So I'm definitely going to catch y'all. If y'all have any questions, make sure y'all leave them down in the comments. Really appreciate y'all liking the video, watching the video. So peace out till next time because I definitely got some more videos I got to get to y'all. So peace out.